really think of it, I was thinking in the language, like right now you hear indigenous knowledge. Um, you hear a lot of terms now. You hear colonization, you hear reconciliation. These are common terms today. 30 years ago, they weren't common terms. Nobody was saying colonization. Nobody was saying traditional indigenous knowledge. Prior to colonization, we, we didn't stay in one place. Generally, like I have Menominee, I have Mohawk, I have uh, Potawatomi, my, my Musham, my grandfather on my mother's side is Odawa. My mom's Odawa and my dad's Ojibwe. So where I come from is that whole Great Lakes area. Manitoulin Island, uh, Wukwemekong, and I'm Nishnabe of the Three Fires Confederacy. We needed a pass to leave the reserves. It was generally not acceptable or not legal for us to go so it was 1951 when my dad said, I'm out of here, I'm out of Dodge. And he left and the city was Toronto. My dad built the Young Street subway line. My parents wanted a better life and then um, raised me off reserve, but always kept me connected to home. So I always went home. He didn't want us to go to residential school. They wanted us to not have the problems they did, and they wanted us to be able to speak English. I left Toronto in 1983, and I went back. So I was a young girl, 21, 22, went back to my community with that whole romantic, you know, gonna make things better on the res. I was on the reserve and um, by now my children were adults, They're, they have their own families. I spent my young woman years raising my children and now I am unemployed. By now I have uh, two degrees, um, six years ago, and I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like my dad, 1951. I want a better life. Time to leave. I didn't want to leave. I have a beautiful home. My mom and my children, my grandchildren are there, but I have to work. So I put it out to university. I applied to a half a dozen universities. I ended up here in Edmonton, which I had, I, to, in all honesty, Edmonton was the last place I wanted to go to. You know, big city. So shortly after I got settled into my condo apartment, uh, I opened a paper, Edmonton, the murder capital of Canada. I was thinking, what did I do? What did I decide? Two years later, March 13, was the TRC, and the TRC ended here in Edmonton. So I, I'm a jingle dress dancer. And uh, I was given tobacco. Uh, the community was organizing a TRC march. After the conference was being done, and they asked me and uh, one of my Gokum sisters to lead this um, march of TRC on Jasper Avenue. So that was March 13. I'd been here almost two years. That was my first time going downtown. I just, the fear in me, and as you could tell, like, I'm a Powell person. I've traveled all over North America, but I didn't have the courage to leave my home here, to go down downtown, because I had heard all these stories of how Edmonton is, the racism, the discrimination. I have this story that I call the Black Plaid shirt story and I intentionally wore this. So last year I worked really hard. I taught at four different universities, three different provinces, while trying to do my PhD. I found out that there's an underground parking lot at Grant McEwen. I didn't know that. So I deliberated all weekend, like 
you know, I don't go to bingo, I don't go to the casino, I don't hardly travel, so maybe I should indulge and yes, I deserve that. I'm a bit older now and I deserve a little luxury. So I went downstairs, I taught my class in the morning, I go downstairs and I um, walked into the parking pass and there's a young gal sitting there and she goes, can I help you? And I said, uh, how much is the, I was asking, how much is the parking outside or the parkade or below? And she goes, well, it depends. She goes, um, are you uh, student or staff? I said, oh, staff. She goes, okay. And then she's putting the in information, asking me my license plate number. And she said, oh, she goes, so are you custodial staff here? And I just put a smirk on my face and I said, no, I'm faculty. She goes, oh. And then she kept in putting the information. It's totally beyond her that I could be a PhD. I'm faculty teaching in the English department, not Native Studies, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm in the English department teaching English literature. I probably could have been upset, but I was just thinking, okay, she thinks I'm the janitor and I wash floors here, of course. What more could I be? I had a dream as a very young girl uh, to get a PhD, but life took over, babies, life, and powwows, and whatever it was. So after I raised my children, I said, I'm going to get my PhD, and I've done it, and I'm doing it. I'm a PhD student. I was raised in Toronto. I had a mother and father. Every Sunday we had roast beef, mashed potatoes and gravy. My dad might have been still drunk when he was making it, but I had that. So all of that, I think, is a part of what gives me the sustenance or the courage so that when I'm spoken to like that, that I don't even invest any energy off of an ignorant person. So my only opinion about that is I have pity for this girl because she's obviously ignorant. I, I take the position that she didn't have malice. In the last municipal elections, I ran for office and CBC did a story of not my platform, not the issues I was speaking about. They did a story of Edmonton's first First Nations woman to run in the municipal election. And um, I didn't think of the racism. I didn't think of the discrimination. I didn't think of murdered and missing women. I didn't come up from a place of deficit. I just thought of I come from, I'm a Anishinaabe Kwe. I dance jingle. We have a beautiful culture. We're a beautiful people. So I think that I'm beautiful. And so I said, yes, I do. I signed my papers right along Iverson and all of them signed the papers. And I spent weeks and weeks up and down uh, porches and stairways knocking on doors. And yes, some people went like this and decided not to let me in. But I went to neighborhood to neighborhood and spoke to many, many people. And they're amazing Edmontonian people that believed. And at the end of the day, they voted for me. When you consider that I'm a woman, that I'm First Nations, I'm from out of province, and to come almost in a four-way tie, that is because there was support and belief. You know, we almost, as, in, as Indigenous people, as Indians, face racism in Edmonton almost every day. If I fought every racist story, I would be fighting every day. And I have to work constantly on it, that I don't get angry, because I can see we can get far more done with peace and kindness than with anger. And not to deny, I'm from the civil rights era. I marched Queen's Park, I sang the AIM song, uh, wore my headband, wore the button that said Indian and proud, 
and hated every white person that I seen because I knew what colonization did to us. But at some point, you've got to let it go and we have to work together. Yeah, sound rolling. Sound? Yeah, rolling. Okay, action.